Chapter 9, Differential Equations, Section 9.1, Modeling with Differential Equations. In general, a differential equation is an equation that contains an unknown function and one or more of its derivatives. The order of a differential equation is the order of the highest derivative that occurs in the equation. A function f is called the solution of a differential equation if the equation is satisfied when y equals f of x and its derivatives are substituted into the equation. So for most algebraic equations, you remember, you had to solve for a particular variable which represented some number. So in differential equations, what we solve for is actually a function itself. So we solve for a y equals function in our differential equation. You might remember from section 3.8, we briefly talked about the rate of population growth, dp dt, and we said that it was equal to a proportionality constant times the population. So that's an example of a differential equation because we have the derivative dp dt involved. What we're going to see later is that there's actually a, a better model assuming non-ideal conditions for uh, dp dt where it actually equals our proportionality constant times a population times 1 minus the population over its carrying capacity because our original uh, equation didn't accommodate for that. I'm not going to talk about that too much though because we're going to do that later. Other differential equations include our uh, restoring force which is mass times the second derivative of x with respect to time equal to minus kx which represents the force equal to a spring constant times how far we stretch the spring. Remember that we talked about Hooke's law in section 6.4 where we said that uh, Hooke's law said that the force was equal to some proportionality constant times how much we stretch our spring. So in this case k is our spring constant and x is how much we stretch and then m is the mass and this entire thing is the force or the restoring force. So this is a much more complicated equation because it's a second order differential equation because it involves a second derivative. So we're not going to talk about equations like that for a very long time but these are just different examples of different differential equations we're going to come across and model different situations with. Before we even can get to modeling though, we should probably do just a couple examples to play with the definitions a little bit and get used to them. So how about we start by showing that every member of the family of functions y equals 1 plus c e to the t over 1 minus c e to the t is a solution of the differential equation y prime equals half y squared minus 1. So what we need to do here is take a look at this differential equation make sure that this solution over here actually goes and plugs into y and makes this true. So what we should do is take y prime, take, let's how about we take the derivative of this and we'll see that it matches up with what this is. So if we take the derivative use of, we're going to look at this guy first. So we're looking at y equals 1 plus c e to the t over 1 minus c to the t. We'll take the derivative and see if it matches with the differential equation. So we get by the quotient rule 1 minus c e to the t times c e to the t minus 1 plus c e to the t times minus c e to the t all over 1 minus c e to the t squared. So we can distribute and we get c e to the t minus, make the e a little more clear, minus c squared e to the 2t plus c e to the t plus c squared e to the 2t all over 1 minus c e to the t squared, which simplifies to 2c e to the t over 1 minus c e to the t squared because of all our cancellations. So now let's take a look at half times y squared minus 1. We'll plug in what y equals 
and then we'll see if our derivatives match. So if we plug in for y, we get half times y squared minus 1 is equal to half with y replaced with 1 plus c e to the t over 1 minus c e to the t and then we square that because half y squared minus 1 so that equals half of 1 plus c e to the t squared minus 1 minus c e to the t squared over 1 minus c e to the t squared. It's like a tongue twister. So it ends up as half times 4 c e to the t over 1 minus c e to the t squared, which is just 2 c e to the t over 1 minus c e to the t squared which is exactly what we got when we took the derivative. So that means that what we did when we differentiated this matches when we substitute in for y. So it is a solution of the differential equation. So in that case, it was a lot easier to check if a solution was a solution than it was to actually solve that differential equation. Let's actually try finding one. We'll find a solution of the differential equation that we just looked at, provided that y of 0 equals 2 because notice that this solution that we had over here that we were given was for all these constant c's c could have been anything so let's find a actual specific function that actually makes this work we call this the uh, initial value problem so we have from before our solution y equals 1 plus c e to the t over 1 minus c e to the t so plugging in for y of 0 equals 2, we'll plug in 0 for t, because that's our independent variable. And we'll plug in 2 for y. So we get 1 plus c e to the 0 over 1 minus c e to the 0. We end up with 1 plus c over 1 minus c. So let's see if we could solve for c. If we multiply, c we have 2 equals this. So multiply by 1 minus c on both sides, and we get 1 plus c. And then we distribute. We get 2 minus 2c two equals 1 plus c. So that means that 3c equals 1, which means that c is 1 third. Great, so now we have our particular solution given the initial value condition. So we have y equals 1 plus 1 third e to the t over 1 minus 1 third e to the t, which we can multiply the top and bottom by 3 to get 3 plus e to the t over 3 minus e to the t.